How oft have I with public voice run on to censure Rome's last hero for deceit, because he wept when Pompey's life was gone. Yet when he lived, he thought his name too great. But now I do recant, and Roman Lord excuse too rash a judgment in a woman. My sex pleads pardon. Pardon then afford. Mistaking is with us but too, too common. Now do I find by self-experience taught one object yields both grief and joy. You wept indeed when honour's worth you thought, but joyed that slaughter did your foe destroy. So at his death your eyes true drops did rain, whom dead you did not wish alive again. When Herod lived, that now is done to death, oft have I wished that I from him were free. Oft have I wished that he might lose his breath. Oft have I wished his carcass dead to see. Then rage and scorn had put my love to flight, that love which once on him was firmly set. Hate hid his true affection from my sight and kept my heart from paying him his debt. And blame me not, for Herod's jealousy had power, even constancy itself, to change. For he, by barring me from liberty, to shun my ranging, taught me first to range, but yet too chaste a scholar was my heart, to learn to love another than my lord, to leave his love, my lesson's former part. I quickly learned the other I abhorred, but now his death to memory doth call the tender love that he to Mariam bore, and mine to him. This makes those rivers fall, which by another thought unmoistened are, for Aristobulus, the loveliest youth that ever did an angel shape appear, the cruel Herod was not moved to Ruth. Then why grieve Mariam Herod's death to hear? Why joy I not, the tongue no more shall speak, that yielded forth my brother's latest doom? Both youth and beauty might thy fury break, and both in him did ill befit a tomb, and worthy grandsire ill did he requite, his high ascent alone by thee procured, except he murdered thee to free the sprite which still he thought on earth too long immured. How happy was it that so he must mind was moved to pity my distressed estate. Might Herod's life a trusty servant find, my death to his, had been unseparate. These thoughts have power, his death to make me bear, no more to which the news may firmly hold, yet cannot this repulse some falling tear, the, that will against my will some grief unfold. And more I owe for him for his love to me, the deepest love that ever yet was seen, yet had I rather such a milkmaid be than be the monarch to Judea's queen.
it was for naught but love he wished his end, might to my death but the vaunt courier prove, but I had rather still be foe than friend to him that saves for hate and kills for love. Hard-hearted Mariam, at thy discontent what floods of tears have drenched his manly face. How canst thou then so faintly now lament thy truest lover's death, a death's disgrace? I now, mine eyes, you do begin to right the wrongs of your admirer. And my lord, long since you should have put your smiles to flight. Ill doth a widowed eye with joy accord. Why now methinks the love I bore him then, when virgin freedom left me unrestrained, doth to my heart begin to creep again. My passion now is far from being feigned. But tears fly back and hide you in your banks. You must not be to Alexandra seen, for if my moan be spied, but little thanks shall Mariam have from that incensed queen. What means these tears? My Mariam doth mistake. The news we heard did tell the tyrant's end. What, weepst thou for thy brother's murderer's sake? Will ever white a tear for a Herod spend? My curse pursue his breathless trunk and spirit, base Edomite, the damned Esau's heir. Must he, ere Jacob's child, the crown inherit? Must he, vile wretch, be set in David's chair? No, David's soul within the bosom placed of our forefather Abram was ashamed to see his seat with such a toad disgraced that seat that hath by Judah's race been famed. Thou fatal enemy to royal blood, did not the murder of my boy suffice to stop thy cruel mouth that gaping stood? But must thou dim the mild Hyrcanus eyes, my gracious father, whose too ready hand did lift this Eudemian from the dust, and he ungrateful caitiff did withstand the man that did in him most friendly trust? What kingdom's right could cruel Herod claim? Was he not Esau's issue, heir of hell? Then what succession can he have but shame? Did not his ancestor his birthright sell? Oh, yes, he doth from Edom's name derive his cruel nature, which with blood is fed. That made him me of sire and son deprive. He ever thirsts for blood, and blood is red. Weep'st thou because his love to thee was bent, and read'st thou love in crimson characters? Slew he thy friends to work thy heart's content? No, hate may justly call that action hers. He gave the sacred priesthood for thy sake to Aristobulus, yet doomed him dead before his back the ephod warm could make, and ere the mitre settled on his head. Oh, had he given my boy no less than right, the double oil should to his forehead bring a double honour, shining doubly bright. His birth anointed him both priest and king. And say my father and my son he slew, to royalise by right your prince-born breath. Was love the cause? Can Mariam deem it true that Herod gave commandment for her death? I know by fits he showed some signs of love, and yet not love, but raging lunacy. And this his hate to thee may justly prove that sure he hates Hyrcanus' family. Who knows if he, unconstant wavering lord, his love to Doris had renewed again, and that he might his bed to her afford. Perchance he wished that Mariam might be slain. Doris? Alas, her time of love was past. Those coals were raked in embers long ago. If Mariam's love and she was now disgraced, nor did I glory in her overthrow. He's not a whit his firstborn son esteemed, because as well as his, he was not mine. My children only for his own he deemed, these boys that did descend from royal line. These he did style his heirs to David's throne. My Alexander, if he live shall sit in the majestic seat of Solomon, to will it so did Herod think it fit. Why? Who can claim from Alexander's brood that gold-adorned lion-guarded chair? Was Alexander not of David's blood? And was not Mariam Alexander's heir? 
What more than right could Herod then bestow? And who will think except for more than right? He did not raise them, for they were not low, but born to wear the crown in his despite. Then send those tears away, that are not sent to thee by reason, but by passion's power. Thine eyes to cheer, thy cheeks to smiles be bent, and entertain with joy this happy hour. Felicity, if when she comes she finds a mourning habit and a cheerless look, will think she is not welcome to thy mind, and so perchance her lodging will not brook. Oh, keep her whilst thou hast her, if she go she will not easily return again. Full many a year have I endured in woe, yet still have sued her presence to obtain. And did not I, to her, as present send a table that best art did beautify of two, to whom heaven did best feature lend to woo her love by winning Antony? For when a prince's favour we do crave, we first their minions' love do seek to win. So I, that sought felicity to have, did with her minion Antony begin. With double slate I sought to captivate the warlike lover, but I did not write. For if my gift had borne but half the rate, the Roman had been overtaken quite. But now he fared like a hungry guest that to some plenteous festival is gone. Now this, now that, he deems to eat were best. Such choice doth make him let them all alone. The boy's large forehead first did fairest seem, then glanced his eye upon my Mariam's cheek, and that, without comparison, did deem what was in either but he most did seek. And thus distracted, either's beauty's might within the other's excellence was drowned. Too much delight did bar him from delight, for either's love the others did confound. Where if thy portraiture had only gone, his life from Herod Antony had taken, he would have loved thee and thee alone, and left the brown Egyptian clean forsaken. And Cleopatra then to seek had been so firm a lover of her waned face. Then great Antonius fall we had not seen by her that fled to have him hold the chase. Then Mariam in a Roman's chariot set, in place of Cleopatra, might have shown. A mart of beauties in her visage met, and part in this, that they were all her own. Not to be empress of aspiring Rome would Mariam like to Cleopatra live. With purest body will I press my tomb, and with no favours Antony could give. Let us retire us that we may resolve how now to deal in this reversed state. Great are the affairs that we must now resolve, and great affairs must not be taken late. More plotting yet. Why, now you have the thing for which so oft you spent your suppliant breath. And Mariam hopes to have another king. Her eyes do sparkle joy for Herod's death. If she desired another king to have, she might before she came in Herod's bed have had her wish. More kings than one did crave for leave to set a crown upon her head. I think with more than reason she laments that she is freed from such a sad annoy. Who erst will weep to part from discontent, and if she joy, she did not causeless joy. You durst not thus have given your tongue the rein if noble Herod still remained in life. Your daughter's bet as far, I dare maintain, might have rejoiced to be my brother's wife. My bet as far, base woman, tis untrue. You scarce have ever my superiors seen. For Mariam's servants were as good as you before she came to be Judea's queen. Now stirs the tongue that is so quickly moved. But more than once your collar I have borne. Your fumish words are sooner said than proved, and Salome's reply is only scorn. Scorn those that are for thy companions held. Though I your brother's face had never seen, my birth, thy baser birth, so far excelled, I had to both of you the princess been. Thou party Jew and party Edomite, thou mongrel issued from rejected race, thy, thy ancestors against the heavens did fight, and thou like them with heavenly birth disgrace. Still twit you me with nothing but my birth. What odds betwixt your ancestors and mine? Both born of Adam, both were made of earth, and both did come from holy Abraham's line. I favour thee when nothing else I say. 
and with thy black arts I'll not pollute my breath, else to thy charge I might full justly lay a shameful life besides a husband's death. Tis true indeed I did the plots reveal that passed betwixt your favourites and you. I meant not I a traitor to conceal, thus Salome your minion Joseph slew. Heaven, dost thou mean this infamy to smother? Let slandered Marian ope thy closed ear. Self-guilt hath ever been suspicion's mother, and therefore I this speech with patience bear. No, had not Salome's unsteadfast heart in Joseph's stead her constabar replaced, to free herself she had not used the art to slander hapless Marian for unchaste. Come, Mariam, let us go. It is no boot to let the head contend against the foot. Live Salome to get so base a style as foot to the proud Mariam. Herod's spirit in happy time for her endured exile, for did he live she should not miss her merit. But he is dead. And though he were my brother, his death such store of cinders cannot cast my coals of love to quench. For though they smother the flames awhile, yet will they out at last. O oh, blessed Arabia, and best climate place, I by the fruit will censure of the tree. Tis not in vain thy happy name thou hast, if all Arabians like Sileus be. Had not my fate been too, too contrary, when I on Constabarus first did gaze, Sileus had been object to mine eye, whose looks and personage must all eyes amaze. But now, ill-fated Salome, they tongue to Constabarus by itself is tied, and now except I do the Hebrew wrong, I cannot be the fair Arabian's bride. What childish lets are these? Why stand I now on honourable points? Tis long ago since shame was written on my tainted brow, and certain tis that shame is on his foe. Had I upon my reputation stood, had I affected an unspotted life, Joseph's veins had still been stuffed with blood, and I to him had lived a sober wife. Then had I never cast an eye of love on Constabarus' now detested face, then had I kept my thoughts without remove and blushed at motion of the least disgrace. But shame is gone, and honour wiped away, and impudency on my forehead sits. She bids me work my will without delay, and for my will I will employ my wits. He loves, I love, then what can be the cause keeps me from being the Arabian's wife? It is the principle of Moses' laws, for Constabarus still remains in life. If he to me did bear as earnest hate as I to him, for him there were an ease. A separating bill might free his fate from such a yoke that did so much displease. Why should such privilege to men be given? Or given to them, why barred from women then? Are men than we in greater grace with heaven, or cannot women hate as well as men? I'll be the custom breaker, and begin to show my sex the way to freedom's door, and with an offering will I purge my sin. The law was made for none but who are poor. If Herod had lived, I might to him accuse my present lord. But for the future's sake, then will I tell the king he did refuse the son of Babis to his power to take. But now I must divorce him from my bed, that my Silaeus may possess his room. Had I not begged his life, he had been dead. I curse my tongue the hinderer of his doom, but then my wandering heart to him was fast, nor did I dream of change. Silaeus said he would be here, and see, he comes at last. Had I not named him longer, had he stayed. Well found, fair Salome, Judea's pride. Hath thy innate wisdom found the way to make Sileus deem him deified by gaining thee a more than precious prey? I have devised the best I can devise. A more imperfect means was never found, but what cares Salome? It doth suffice if our endeavours with their end be crowned. In this our land we have an ancient use, permitted first by a lawgiver's head. Who hates his wife, though for no just abuse, may with a bill divorce her from his bed. But in this custom women are not free, yet I for once will rest it. Blame not thou the ill I do, since what I do's for thee, though others blame, Sileus should allow. Think Salome, Sileus hath a tongue to censure her fair actions. Let my blood bedash my proper brow, for such a wrong the being yours can make even vices good. 
Arabia joy, prepare thy earth with green, thou never happy wert indeed till now. Now shall thy ground be trod by beauty's queen, her foot is destined to depress thy brow. Thou shalt, fair Salome, command as much as if the royal ornament were thine. The weakness of Arabia's king is such, the kingdom is not his so much as mine. My mouth is our abode as oracle, who thinks not aught but what Sileus will. And thou, rare creature, Asia's miracle, shalt be to me as it abode us still. Tis not for glory I thy love accept, Judea yields me honours worthy store. Had not affection in my bosom crept, my native country should my life deplore. Were not Sileus he with whom I go, I would not change my Palestine for Rome. Much less would I, a glorious state to show, go far to purchase an Arabian tomb. Far be it from Sileus so to think. I know it is thy gratitude requites the love that is in me, and shall not shrink till death do sever me from earth's delights. But with <coughs> methinks the wolf is in our talk. Be gone, Sileus. Who doth here arrive? Tis Constabarus that doth hither walk. I'll find a quarrel, him from me to drive. Farewell. But were it not for thy command, in his despite, Sileus here would stand. O oh, Salome, how much you wrong your name, your race, your country, and your husband most. A private stranger's confidence is shame. I blush for you, who have your blushing lost. Oft have I found, and found you to my grief, consorted with this base Arabian here. Heaven knows you have been my comfort chief. Then do not now my greater plague appear. Now by the carved edifice, that on Mount Sion makes so fair a show, and by the altar fit for sacrifice, I love thee more than thou thyself dost know. Oft with a silent sorrow have I heard how ill Judea's mouth doth censure thee, and did I not thine honour much regard, thou shouldst not be exhorted thus for me? Didst thou but know the worth of honest fame, how much a virtuous woman is esteemed, Thou wouldst like hell eschew deserved shame, and seek to be both chaste and chastely deemed. A wisest prince did say, and true he said, a virtuous woman crowns her husband's head. Did I for this uprear thy low estate? Did I for this requital beg thy life that thou hast forfeited? Hapless fate, to be to such a thankless wretch the wife. This hand of mine hath lifted up thy head, which many a day ago had fallen full low, because the sons of Babas are not dead. To me thou dost both life and fortune owe. You have my patience often exercised. Use made my collar keep within the banks. Yet boast no more, but be by me advised. A benefit upbraided forfeits thanks. I prithee, Salome, dismiss this mood. Thou dost not know how ill it fits thy place. My words were all intended for thy good, to raise thine honour and to stop disgrace. To stop disgrace? Take thou no care for me. Nay, do thy worst. Thy worst I set not by. No shame of mine is like to light on thee. Thy love and admonitions I defy. Thou shalt no hour longer call me wife. Thy jealousy procures my hate so deep that I from thee do mean to free my life by a divorcing bill before I sleep. Oh, are Hebrew women now transformed into men? Why do you not as well our battles fight and wear our armour? Suffer this, and then let all the world be topsy turvy quite. Let fishers graze and beasts swim and birds descend. Let fire burn downwards while earth aspires. Let winter's heat and summer's cold offend. Let thistles grow on vines and grapes on briars. Set us to spin or sow, or, or at the best make us wood hewers, white water bearing whites with sacred service. Let us take no rest. Use us as Joshua did the Gibbonites. Hold on your talk till it be the time to end. For me, I am resolved it shall be so. Though I be the first that to this course do bend, I shall not be the last, full well I know. Why then? Be witness, heaven, the judge of sins. Be witness, spirits, for the stew the dark. Be witness, angels, witness, cherubims, whose semblance sits upon the holy ark. Be witness, earth, be witness, Palestine, be witness, David's city. 
If my heart did ever merit such an act of thine, or if the fault be mine that makes us part. Since mildest Moses, friend unto the Lord, did work his wonders in the land of Ham, and slew the firstborn babes without a sword, in sign whereof we eat the holy lamb, till now that fourteen hundred years are past, since first the law with us hath been in force, you are the first, and will, I hope, be last, that ever sought her husband to divorce. I mean not to be led by precedent. My will shall be to me instead of law. I fear me much you will repent too late that you have ever lived so void of awe. This is Sileus, love, that makes you thus reverse all order. You must next be his, but if my thoughts are right, the cause discuss, in winning you, he gains no lasting bliss. I was Sileus, and not long ago, Josephus then was Constabarus now. When you became my friend, you proved his foe, as now for him you break to me your vow. If once I loved you, greater is your debt, for certain tis that you deserved it not. An undeserved love we soon forget, and therefore that to me can be no blot. But now fare ill, my once beloved lord, yet never more beloved than now abhorred. Yet Constabarus biddeth thee farewell. Farewell, light creature. Heaven forgive thy sin. My prophesying spirit doth foretell thy wavering thoughts do yet but new begin. Yet I have better escaped than Joseph did. But if our Herod's death had been delayed, the valiant youths that I so long have hid had been by her and I for them betrayed. Therefore, in happy hour, did Caesar give the fatal blow to wanton Antony. For had he lived, our Herod then should live. But great Antonius' death made Herod die. Had he enjoyed his breath, not I alone had been in danger of a deadly fall, but Mariam had the way of peril gone. Though by the tyrant most beloved of all, the sweet-faced Mariam, as free from guilt as heaven from spots. Yet had her lord come back, her purest blood had been unjustly spilt, and Salome it was, would work her wreck. Though all Judea yield her innocent, she often hath been near to punishment. Those minds that wholly dote upon delight, except they only joy in inward good, so hope at last to hop upon the right, and so from sand they leap in loathsome mud. Fond wretches, seeking what they cannot find, for no content attends a wavering mind. If wealth they do desire, and wealth attain, then wondrous fain would they to honour leap. If mean degree they do in honour gain, they would but wish a little higher step. Thus step to step and wealth to wealth they add, yet cannot all their plenty make them glad. Yet oft we see that some in humble state are cheerful, pleasant, happy, and content. When those indeed that are of higher state with vain additions do their thoughts torment, the one would to his mind his fortune bind, the other to his fortune frames his mind. To wish variety is sign of grief, for if you like your state as now it is, why should an alteration bring relief? Nay, change would then be feared as loss of bliss. That man is only happy in his fate that is delighted in a settled state. Still Mariam wished she from her lord were free for expectation of variety. Yet now she sees her wishes prosperous be. She grieves because her lord so soon did die. Who can those vast imaginations feed, wherein a property contempt doth breed? Were Herod now perchance to live again, she would again as much be grieved at that. All that she may, she ever doth disdain, her wishes guide her to she knows not what. And sad must be their looks, their honour sour, that care for nothing being in their power. "'Tis true, Grafina, now the time draws nigh, wherein the holy priest with hallowed rite the happy long-desired knot shall tie, for Rorus and Grafina to unite. 
How oft have I with lifted hands implored this blessed hour, till now implored in vain, which hath my wished liberty restored, and made my subject self my own again. Thy love, fair maid, upon mine eye doth sit, whose nature hot doth dry the moisture all, which were in nature and in reason fit for my monarchal brother's death to fall. Had Herod lived, he would have plucked my hand from fair Graffina's palm perforce, and tied the same in hateful and despised band, for I had had a baby to my bride. Scarce can her infant tongue with easy voice her name distinguish to another's ear, yet had he lived, his power and not my choice had made me solemnly the contract swear. Have I not cause in such a change to joy? What, though she be my niece a princess born, Near bloods without respect, high birth a toy, since love can teach blood and kindred scorn. What booted it that he did raise my head to be his realm's co-partner, kingdom's mate, with all he kept Graffina from my bed, more wished by me than thrice Judea's state? Oh, could not he be skilful judge in love that doted so upon his Mariam's face? He, for his passion, Doris did remove. I needed not a lawful wife displace. It could not be but he had power to judge, but he that never grudged a kingdom's share, this well-known happiness to me did grudge, and meant to be therein without compare. Else had I been his equal in love's host, for though the diadem on Mariam's head corrupt the vulgar judgments, I will boast Graffina's brows as white, her cheeks as red. Why speak'st thou not, fair creature? Move thy tongue, for silence is a sign of discontent. It were to both our loves too great a wrong, if now this hour to find thee sadly bent. Mistake me not, my lord. Too oft have I desired this time to come with winged feet to be enwrapped with grief when tis too nigh. You know my wishes ever yours did meet. If I be silent, tis no more but fear that I should say too little when I speak. But since you will my imperfections bear, in spite of doubt, I will my silence break. Yet might amazement tie my moving tongue, but that I know before Ferreras' mind. I have admired your affection long, and cannot yet therein a reason find. Your hand hath lifted me from lowest state to highest eminency, wondrous grace, and me your handmaid have you made your mate, though all but you alone do count me base. You have preserved me pure at my request, though you so weak a vassal might constrain to yield to your high will. Then last, not best in my respect, a princess you disdain. Then need not all these favours study crave to be requited by a simple maid? And study still you know must silence have. Then be my cause for silence justly weighed. But study cannot boot, nor I requite, Accept your lowly handmaid's steadfast love and fast obedience may your mind delight. I will not promise more than I can prove. That study needs not let Graffina smile, and I desire no greater recompense. I cannot vaunt me in a glorious style, nor shew my love in far-fetched eloquence, but this believe me. Never Herod's heart hath held his prince-born beauty-famed wife in nearer place than thou, fair virgin, art to him that holds the glory of his life. Should Herod's body leave the sepulchre and entertain the severed ghost again, he should not be my nuptial hinderer, except he hindered it with dying pain. Come, fair Graffina, let us go and state this wish and dear time to celebrate. Now, valiant friend, you have our lives redeemed, which lives are saved by you to you are due. Command, and you shall see yourself esteemed. Our lives and liberties belong to you. This twice six years with hazard of your life you have concealed us from the tyrant's sword. Though cruel Herod's sister were your wife, you durst in scorn of fear this grace afford. In recompense, we know not what to say. A poor reward were thanks for such merit. Our truest friendship at your feet we lay. The best requital to a noble spirit. Oh, how you wrong our friendship, valiant youth. With friends, there is no such word as debt. Where amity is tied with bond of truth, all benefits are there in common set. Then is the golden age with them renewed. 
All names of property are banished quite, division and distinction are eschewed. Each hath to what belongs to others' right. And tis not sure so full a benefit freely to give is freely to require. A bounteous act hath glory following it. They cause the glory that the act desire. All friendship should the patent imitate of Jesse's son and valiant Jonathan. For neither sovereigns nor fathers hate a friendship fixed on virtue sever can. Oh, too much of this. Tis written in the heart and needs no amplifying with the tongue. Now, may you, from your living tomb, depart where Herod's life has kept you over long. Too great an injury to a noble mind to be quick buried. You had purchased fame some years ago, but that you were confined, while well, thousand meaner did advance their name. Your best of life, the prime of all your years, your time of action, is from you bereft. Twelve winters have you overpassed in fears. Yet, if you use it well, enough is left. And who can doubt, but you will use it well. The sons of Babus have it by descent, in all their thoughts each action to excel, boldly to act and wisely to invent. Had it not like the hateful cuckoo been, whose riper age his infant nurse doth kill, so long we had not kept ourselves unseen, but Constabarus' safety crossed our will. For had the tyrant fixed his cruel eye on our concealed faces, wrath had swayed his justice so that he had forced us die. And dearer price than life we would have paid, for you, our truest friend, had fallen with us, and we, much like a house on pillars set, had clean depressed our prop, and therefore thus our ready will with our concealment met. But now that you, fair lord, are dangerless, the sons of Babis shall their rigour show, and prove it was not baseness did oppress our hearts so long, but honour kept them low. Yet do I fear this tale of Herod's death at last will prove a very tale indeed, it gives me strongly in my mind his breath will be preserved to make a number bleed. I wish not, therefore, to be set as large, yet peril to myself I do not fear. Let us for some days longer be your charge, till we of Herod's state the truth do hear. What? Art thou turned a coward, noble youth? That thou begins to doubt undoubted truth? Were it my brother's tongue that cast this doubt, I from his heart would have the question out with this keen falchion, but tis you, my lord, against whose head I must not lift a sword. I am so tired in gratitude. Believe you have no cause to take it ill. If any word of mine your heart did grieve, the word dissented from the speaker's will. I know it was not fear the doubt begun, but rather valour and your care of me. A coward could not be your father's son, yet, no, I doubts unnecessary be. For who can think that in Antonius's fall, Herod, his bosom friend, should scape unbruised? Then, Caesar, we might thee an idiot call, if thou by him shouldst be so far abused. Lord Constabarus, let me tell you this. Upon submission, Caesar will forgive, and therefore, though the tyrant did amiss, it may fall out that he will let him live. Not many years ago it is since I, directed thither by my father's care, in famous Rome for twice twelve months did lie my life from Hebrews' cruelty to spare. There, though I were but yet of boyish age, I bent mine eye to mark, mine ears to hear, where I did see Octavius, then a page, when first he did to Julius' sight appear. Methought I saw such mildness in his face, and such a sweetness in his looks did grow, with all commixed with so majestic grace his physnomy his fortune did foreshow. For this I am indebted to mine eye, but then mine ear received more evidence, by that I knew his love to clemency, how he with hottest collar could dispense. But we have more than barely heard the news, it hath been twice confirmed, and though some tongue might be so false, with false report to abuse, a false report hath never lasted long. But be it so that Herod have his life, concealment would not a whit avail. For certain tis that she that was my wife would not to set her accusation fail. And therefore now, as good the venture give, and free ourselves from blot of cowardice, as show a pitiful desire to live, for who can pity but they must despise? I yield, but to necessity I yield. I dare upon the stout engage mine arm, that Herod shall again this kingdom wield, and prove his death to be a false alarm. I doubt it too. God grant it be an error. 
Tis best without a cause to be in terror, and rather had I, though my soul be mine, my soul should lie than prove a true divine. Come, come, let fear go seek a dastard's nest. Undaunted courage lies in a noble breast. You royal buildings bow your lofty side and stoop to her that is by right your queen. Let your humility upbraid the pride of those in whom no due respect is seen. Nine times have we with trumpets haughty sound and vanishing sour leaven from our taste observed the feast that takes the fruit from ground since I fair city did behold thee last. So long is it since Mariam's pure cheek did rob from mine the glory, and so long since I returned my native town to seek, and with me nothing but the sense of wrong. And thee, my boy, whose birth though great it were, yet have thy after-fortunes proved but poor. When thou wert born, how little did I fear thou shouldst be thrust from forth thy father's door. Art thou not Herod's right-begotten son? Was not the hapless Doris Herod's wife? Yes, ere he had the Hebrew kingdom won, I was companion to his private life. Was I not fair enough to be a queen? Why, ere thou wert to me false monarch tied, my lake of beauty might as well be seen as after I had lived five years thy bride. Yet then thine oath came pouring like the rain, which all affirmed my face without compare, and that, if thou mightst Doris love obtain, for all the world besides thou didst not care. Then was I young and rich and nobly born, and therefore worthy to be Herod's mate, yet thou, ungrateful, cast me off with scorn, when heaven's purpose raised your meaner fate. Oft have I begged for vengeance for this fact, and with dejected knees, aspiring hands, have prayed the highest power to enact the fall of her that on my trophy stands. Revenge I have according to my will, yet where I wished this vengeance did not light, I wished it should high-hearted Mariam kill, but it against my whilom lord did fight. With thee, sweet boy, I came, and came to try if thou before his bastards might be placed in Herod's royal seat and dignity. But Mariam's infants here are only graced, and now for us there doth no hope remain. Yet we will not return till Herod's end be more confirmed. Perchance he is not slain. So glorious fortunes may my boy attend, for if he live, He'll think it doth suffice that he to Doris shows such cruelty. For as he did my wretched life despise, so do I know I shall despise and die. Let him but prove as natural to thee as cruel to thy miserable mother. His cruelty shall not upbraided be, but in thy fortunes I his faults will smother. Each mouth within the city loudly cries that Herod's death is certain. Therefore we had best some subtle hidden plot devise, that Mariam's children might subverted be, by poison's drink, or else by murderous knife, so we may be advanced, it skills not how. They are but bastards, you were Herod's wife, and foul adultery blotteth Mariam's brow. They are too strong to be by us removed, or else revenge's foulest spotted face by our detested wrongs might be approved. But weakness must to greater power give place. But let us now retire to grieve alone, for solitariness best fitteth moan. Well met, Judean lord, the only white Silaeus wished to see. I am to call thy tongue to strict account. For what despite, I am ready to hear and answer all. But if directly at the cause I guess that breeds this challenge, you must pardon me, and now some other ground of fight profess, for I have vowed, vows must unbroken be. What may be your exception? Let me know. 
Why aught concerning Salome, my sword shall not be wielded for a cause so low, a blow for her my arm will scorn to afford. It is for slandering her unspotted name, and I will make thee in thy vows despite suck up the breath that did my mistress blame and swallow it again to do her right. I prithee, give some other quarrel ground to find beginning. Rail against my name, or strike me first, or let some scarlet wound inflame my courage. Give me words of shame. Do thou our Moses' sacred laws disgrace? Deprave our nation. Do me some despite. I am apt enough to fight in any case. Yet, for Salome, I will not fight. Nor I for aught but Salome. My sword that owes his service to her sacred name will not an edge for other cause afford. Another fight I am not sure of fame. For her I pity thee enough already. For her I therefore will not mangle thee. A woman with a heart so most unsteady will of herself sufficient torture be. I cannot envy for so light a gain her mind with such inconstancy doth run, as with a word thou dost her love obtain, as with a word she will from thee be won. <laughs> so light is her possessions, for most day is her affections lost. To me tis known. As good as go hold the wind, as make her stay. She never loves, but till she call her own. She merely is a painted sepulchre that is both fair and vilely foul at once. Though on her outside graces garnish her, her mind is filled with worse than rotten bones, and ever ready lifted is her hand to aim destruction at her husband's throat. For proofs, Josephus and myself do stand, though once on both of us she seemed to dote. Her mouth Though serpent-like, it never hisses, yet, uh, like a serpent, poisons when it kisses. Well, Hebrew, well thou barkst, but wilt not bite? I tell thee still, for her I will not fight. Why, then I call thee coward. <gasps> From my heart I give thee thanks. A coward's hateful name cannot to valiant minds a blot impart, and therefore I with joy receive the same. Thou knowest I am no coward. Thou wert by at the Arabian battle t'other day, and sawest my sword with daring valency amongst the faint Arabians cut my way, the blood of foes. No more could let it shine, and t'was enamelled with some of thine. But now, have at thee. Not for Salome I fight, but to discharge a coward's style. Here gins the fight, that shall not parted be, before a soul or two endure. Exile! <laughs> Thy sword hath made some windows for my blood, to show a horrid crimson physnomy. To breathe for both of us, methinks t'were good. The day will give us time enough to die. With all my heart, take breath. Thou shalt have time. And if thou list a twelve month, let us end. Into thy cheeks there doth a paleness climb. Thou canst not from my sword thyself defend. What needest thou for Salome to fight? Thou hast her, and mayst keep her, none strives for her. I willingly to thee resign my right, for in my very soul I do abhor her. Thou seest, I am fresh, unwounded yet. Then not for fear I do this offer make. Thou art with loss of blood to fight unfit, for here is one, and there another take. I will not leave as long as breath remains within my wounded body. Spare your words. My heart and blood stead courage entertains. Salome's love no place for fear affords. Oh, could thy soul but prophesy like mine, I would not wonder thou shouldst long to die. For Salome, if I are right divine, will be then death a greater misery. Then list, I'll breathe no longer. Do thy will, I hateless fight, and charitably kill. Pity thyself, Silaeus, let not death intrude before his time into thy heart. Alas, it is too late to fear, his breath is from thy body, now about to depart. How farest thou, brave Arabian? Very well. My leg is hurt. I can no longer fight. It only grieves me that so soon I fell, before Fessalem's wrongs I came to right. 
Thy wounds are less than mortal. Never fear, thou shalt a safe and quick recovery find. Come, I will thee unto my lodging bear. I hate thy body, but I love thy mind. Thanks, noble Jew. I see a courteous foe. Stern enmity to friendship can no art. Had not my heart and tongue engaged me so, I would from thee no foe but friend depart. My heart to Salome is tied too fast to leave her love for friendship. Yet my skill shall be employed to make your favour last, and I will honour Constabarus still. I ope my bosom to thee, and will take thee in as friend, and grieve for thy complaint. But if we do not expedition make, thy loss of blood, I fear, will make thee faint. To hear a tale with ears prejudicate, it spoils the judgment and corrupts the sense. That human error, given to every state, is greater enemy to innocence. It makes us foolish, heady, rash, unjust. It makes us never try before we trust. It will confound the meaning, change the words, for it our sense of hearing much deceives. Besides, no time to judgment it affords, to weigh the circumstance our ear receives. The ground of accidents it never tries, but makes us take for truth ten thousand lies. Our ears and hearts are apt to hold for good that we ourselves do most desire to be. And then we drown objections in the flood of partiality. Tis that we see that makes false rumours long with credit past, though they, like rumours, must conclude at last. The greatest part of us prejudicate, with wishing Herod's death do hold it true, The being once deluded does not bait the credit to a better likelihood due. Those few that wish it not, the multitude, do carry headlong, so they doubts conclude. They not object the weak, uncertain ground whereon they built this tale of Herod's end, whereof the author scarcely can be found, and all because their wishes that way bend. They think not of the peril that in sooth, if this should prove the contrary to truth. On this same doubt, on this so light a breath, they pawn their lives and fortunes, for they all behave them as the news of Herod's death they did of most undoubted credit call. But if their actions now do rightly hit, let them commend their fortune, not their wit. Urge me no more, Grafina, to forsake. Not twelve hours since I married her for love. And do you think a sister's power can make a resolute decree so soon remove? <coughs> Poor minds they are that honour not effects. Who hunts for honour, happiness neglects. You might have been both of felicity and honour too in equal measure seized. It is not. You can tell so well as I what tis can make me happy or displeased. To match for neither beauty nor respects one mean of birth, but yet of meaner mind, a woman full of natural defects, I wonder what your eye in her could find. Mine eye found loveliness, mine ear found wit, to please the one and to enchant the other. Grace on her eye, mirth on her tongue doth sit, in looks a child, in wisdom's house a mother. But say you thought her fair, as none thinks else, Knows not, Ferorus, beauty is a blast, much like this flower, which today excels, but longer than a day it will not last. Her wit exceeds her beauty. Wit may show the way to ill as well as good, you know. But wisdom is the porter of her head, and bars all wicked words from issuing thence. But of a porter, better were you sped, if she against their entrance made defence. But wherefore comes the sacred Ananel, that hitherward his hasty steps doth bend? Great sacrificer! You are arrived well. Ill news from holy mouth I not attend. My lips, my son, with peaceful tidings blessed, shall utter honey to your listening ear. The word of death comes not from priestly breast. I speak of life. In life there is no fear. And for the news I did the heavens salute and fill the temple with my thankful voice. For though that morning may not me pollute, yet... At pleasing accidents, I may rejoice. Is Herod then revived from certain death? What? Can your news restore my brother's breath? Both so. And so the king is safe and sound, and did such grace in royal Caesar met that he, with larger style than ever crowned, within his this hour Jerusalem will greet. I did but come to tell you 
and must beg to make preparatives for sacrifice. I knew his death your hearts, like mine, did wreck, though to conceal it proved you wise. How can my joy sufficiently appear? A heavier tale did never pierce mine ear. Now Salome of happiness may boast. But now Pheroras is in danger most. I shall enjoy the comfort of my life. And I shall lose it, losing of my wife. Joy, heart, for Constavarus shall be slain. Grieve, soul, Graffina shall from me be ta'en. Smile, cheeks, the fair Salaeus shall be mine. Weep, eyes, for I must with a child combine. Well, brother, cease your moans. On one condition I'll undertake to win the king's consent. Graffina still shall be in your tuition, and her with you be ne'er the less content. What's the condition? Let me quickly know that I as quickly your command may act, were it to see what er herbs in offer grow, or that the lofty Tyrus might be sacked. Tis not so hard a task. It is no more but tell the king that Constavarus hid the sons of Babis, done to death before, and tis no more than Constavarus did. And tell him more that I, for Herod's sake, not able to endure my brother's foe, did with a bill our separation make, though loath from Constabarus else to go. Believe this tale foretold. I'll go from hence and Herod's ear the Hebrew to deface, and I that never studied eloquence do mean with eloquence this tale to grace. This will be Constabarus' quick dispatch, which from my mouth would lesser credit find. Yet shall he not decease without a match, for Miriam shall not linger long behind. First, jealousy. If that avail not, fear shall be my minister to work her end. A common error moves not Herod's ear, which doth so firmly to his Miriam bend. She shall be charged with so horrid crime, as Herod's fear shall turn his love to hate. I'll make some swear that she desires to climb and seeks to poison him for his estate. I scorn that she should live my birth to upbraid to call me base and hungry Edomite. With patient show her collar I betrayed and watched the time to be revenged by slight. Now, tongue of mine, with scandal load her name, turn hers to fountains, Herod's eyes to flame. Yet first I will begin for Rora's suit, that he my earnest business may affect, and I of Marim will keep me mute, till first some other shall her name detect. Who's there? Salaeus, man, how fares your lord, that your aspects do bear the badge of sorrow? He hath the marks of Constabarus' sword, and for a while desires your sight to borrow. My heavy curse the hateful sword pursue, my heavier curse on the more hateful arm that wounded my Salaeus. But renew your tale again, hath he no mortal harm? No sign of danger doth in him appear, nor are his wounds in place of peril seen. He bids you be assured you need not fear. He hopes to make you yet Arabia's queen. Commend my heart to be Salaeus' charge. Tell him, my brother's sudden coming now will give my foot no room to walk at large, but I will see him yet ere night, I vow. So he must... Tell me what the news may be that makes your eyes so full, your cheeks so blue. I know not how to call them. Ill for me, tis sure they are. Not so, I hope, for you. Herod... Oh, what of Herod? Herod lives. How? Lives? What, in some cave or forest hid? Nay, back returned with honour. Caesar gives him greater grace than e'er Antonius did. Foretell the ruin of my family. Tell me I shall see our city burned. Tell me I shall a death disgraceful die, but tell me not that Herod is returned. Be not impatient, madam. Be but mild. His love to you again will soon be bred. I will not to his love be reconciled. With solemn vows I have forsworn his bed. But you must break those vows. I'll rather break the heart of Mariam. Cursed is my fate, but speak no more to me. In vain ye speak, to live with him I so profoundly hate. Great queen, ye must to me your pardon give, so he must cannot now your will obey. If your command should me to silence drive, it were not to obey, but to betray. Reject and slight my speeches, mock my faith, scorn my observance, call my counsel naught, though you regard not what Sahimus saith, 
yet will I ever freely speak my thought. I fear ere long I shall fair Mariam see in woeful state, and by herself undone. Yet for your issue's sake more temperate be, the heart by affability is won. And must I to my prison turn again? <laughs> oh, now I see I was an hypocrite. <laughs> I did this morning for his death complain, and yet do mourn because he lives ere night. When I his death believed, compassion wrought and was the sticklier twixt my heart and him. But now that curtains drawn from off my thought, hate doth appear again with visage grim and paints the face of Herod in my heart in horrid colours with detested look. Then fear would come, but scorn doth play her part and saith that scorn with fear can never brook. I know I could enchain him with a smile and lead him captive with a gentle word. I scorn my look, should ever man beguile, or other speech than meaning to afford, else Salome in vain might spend her wind, in vain might Herod's mother wet her tongue, in vain had they complotted and combined, for I could overthrow them all ere long. Oh, what a shelter is mine innocence! To shield me from the pangs of inward grief, against all mishaps, it is my fair defence, and to my sorrows yields a large relief. To be commandress of the triple earth, and sit in safety from a fall secure, to have all nations celebrate my birth, I would not that my spirit were be impure. Let my distressed state unpitied be. Mine innocence is hope enough for me. Poor guiltless queen, oh, that my wish might place a little temper now about thy heart. Unbridled speech is Mariam's worst disgrace, and will endanger her without desert. I am in greater hazard. O'er my head the fatal axe doth hang unsteadily. My disobedience once discovered will shake it down, so he must so shall die. For when the king shall find we thought his death had been as certain as we see his life, and marks withal I slighted so his breath, as to preserve alive his matchless wife, nay more, to give to Alexander's hand the regal dignity, the sovereign power, how I had yielded up at her command the strength of all the city, David's tower, what more than common death may I expect, since I too well do know his cruelty, to a death a word of Herod's to neglect, what then to do directly contrary? Yet, life, I quit thee with a willing spirit, and think thou couldst not better be employed. I forfeit thee for her that more doth merit. Ten such were better dead than she destroyed. But fare thee well, chaste queen. Well may I see the darkness palpable and rivers part, the sun stand still, Nay more, retorted be, but never woman with so pure a heart. Thine eyes, grave majesty, keeps all in awe, and cuts the wings of every loose desire. Thy brow is table to the modest law, yet though we dare not love, we may admire. And if I die, it shall my soul content, my breath in Mariam's service shall be spent. "'Tis not enough for one that is a wife to keep her spotless from an act of ill, but from suspicion she should free her life, and bear herself of power as well as will. "'Tis not so glorious for her to be free as by her proper self restrained to be. "'When she hath spacious ground to walk upon, why on the ridge should she desire to go? "'It is no glory to forbear alone those things that may her honour overthrow.' But tis thankworthy if she will not take all lawful liberties for honour's sake. That wife her hand against her fame doth rear, that more than to her lord alone will give a private word to any second ear. And though she may with reputation live, yet though most chaste she doth her glory blot, and wounds her honour though she kills it not. 
When to their husbands they themselves do bind, do not they wholly give themselves away? Or give they but their body, not their mind, reserving that, though best, for others pray? No, sure, their thoughts no more can be their own, and therefore should to none but one be known. Then she usurps upon another's right, that seeks to be by public language graced, and though her thoughts reflect with purest light, her mind, if not peculiar, is not chaste. For in a wife it is no worse to find a common body than a common mind. And every mind, though free from thought of ill, that out of glory seeks a worth to show, when any's ears but one therewith they fill, doth in a sort her pureness overthrow. Now Mariam had, but that this she bent, been free from fear as well as innocent. Hail, happy city, happy in thy store, and happy that thy building such we see, more happy in the temple where we adore, but most of all that Mariam lives in thee. Art thou returned? How fares my Mariam? She's uh, well, my lord, and will anon be here, as you commanded. Muffle up thy brow, thou day's dark taper. Mariam will appear, and where she shines we need not thy dim light. O oh, haste thy steps, rare creature, speed thy pace, and let thy presence make the day more bright, and cheer the heart of Herod with thy face. It is an age since I from Mariam went. Methinks our parting was in David's days. The hours are so increased by discontent. Deep sorrow, Joshua-like, the season stays. But when I am with Mariam, time runs on. Her sight can make months, minutes, days of weeks. An hour does then no sooner come than gone, when in her face mine eye for wonders seeks. You world-commanding city, Europe's grace, twice hath my curious eye your streets surveyed. And I have seen the statue-filled place that once, if not for geese, had been betrayed. I all your Roman beauties have beheld, and seen the shows your aediles did prepare. I saw the sum of what in you excelled, yet saw no miracle like my Mariam rare. The fair and famous Livia, Caesar's love, the world-commanding mistress did I see, whose beauties both the world and Rome approve. Yet, Mariam, Livia is not like to thee. Be patient, but a little while, mine eyes, within your compassed limits be contained. That object straight shall your desires suffice, for which you were so long a while restrained. How wisely, Mariam, doth the time delay, lest sudden joy my sense should suffocate. I am prepared, thou needst no longer stay. Who's there? My Mariam, more than happy fate. Oh, no, it is Ferorus. Welcome, brother. Now for a while I must my passion smother. All health and safety wait upon my lord, and may you long in prosperous fortune live with Rome commanding Caesar at accord, and have all honours that the world can give. Oh, brother, now thou speak'st not from thy heart. No, thou hast struck a blow at Herod's love. That cannot quickly from my memory part, though Salome did me to pardon move. Valiant for Salus, now to thee farewell. Thou wert my kind and honourable brother. O oh, hapless hour, when you self-stricken fell, thou father's image, glory of thy mother. Had I desired a greater suit of thee than to withhold thee from a harlot's bed, thou wouldst have granted it. But now I see, all are not like that in a womb are bred. Thou wouldst not, hadst thou heard of Herod's death, have made his burial time thy bridal hour. Thou wouldst with clamours, not with joyful breath, have showed the news to be not sweet, but sour. For Salus' great worth, I know, did stain Ferora's petty valour. But they lie, excepting you yourself, that dare maintain that he did honour Herod more than I. For what I showed, love's power constrained me show. And pardon loving faults for Marian's sake. Mariam, where is she? Nay, I do not know, but absent use of her fair name I make. You have forgiven greater faults than this, for Constabarus, that against your will preserved the sons of Babus, lives in bliss, though you commanded him the youths to kill. Go, take a present order for his death, and let those traitors feel the worst of fears. 
Now Salome will whine to beg his breath, but I'll be deaf to prayers and blind to tears. He is, my lord, from Salome divorced, though her affection did to leave him grieve. Yet was she by her love to you enforced to leave the man that would your foes relieve. Then haste them to their death. I will requite thee, gentle Mariam, a Salome, I mean. The thought of Marian doth so steal my sprit, my mouth from speech of her I cannot wean. And here she comes indeed, happily met, my best and dearest half. What ails, my dear? Thou dost the difference certainly forget twixt dusky habits and a time so clear. My lord, I suit my garments to my mind, and there no cheerful colours can I find. Is this my welcome? Have I longed so much to see my dearest Mariam discontent? What is that is the cause thy heart to touch? O oh, speak that I thy sorrow may prevent. Art thou not Jury's queen and Herod's too? Be my commandress, be my sovereign guide. To be thy thee directed I will woo, for in thy pleasure lies my highest pride. Or if thou think Judea's narrow brown too strict a limit for thy great command, thou shalt be empress of Arabia crowned, for thou shalt rule, and I will win the land. I'll rob the holy David's sepulchre to give thee wealth, if thou for wealth do care. Thou shalt have all they did with him in tur, and I for thee will make the temple bare. I neither have of power nor riches want. I have enough, nor do I wish for more. Your offers to my heart no ease can grant except they could my brother's life restore. No, had you wished the wretched Mariam glad, or had your love to her been truly tied, nay, had you not desired to make her sad, my brother nor my grandsire had not died. Wilt thou believe no oaths to clear thy lord? How oft have I with execration sworn? Thou art by me beloved, by me adored, Yet are my protestations heard with scorn. Hercanus plotted to deprive my head of this long-settled honour that I wear, and therefore I did justly doom him dead, to rid the realm from peril, me from fear. Yet I, for Mariam's sake, do so repent the death of one whose blood she did inherit, I wish I had a kingdom's treasure spent, so I had ne'er expelled Hercanus' spirit. As I affected that same noble youth, in lasting infamy my name enroll, if I not mourned his name with hearty truth, did I not show to him my earnest love, when I to him the priesthood did restore, and did for him a living priest remove, which never had been done but once before? I know that moved by importunity you made him priest, and shortly after die. I will not speak unless to be believed. This froward humour will not do you good. It hath too much already, Herod grieved, to think that you on terms of hate have stood. Yet smile, my dearest Mariam, do but smile, and I will all unkind conceits exile. I cannot frame disguise, nor never taught my face a look dissenting from my thought. By heaven, you vex me. Build not on my love. I will not build on so unstable ground. Nought is so fixed but peevishness may move. Tis better slightest cause than none were found. Be judge yourself if ever Herod sought, or would be moved a cause of change to find. Yet let your look declare a milder thought, my heart again you shall to marry and bind. How oft did I for you my mother chide, revile my sister and my brother rate, and tell them all my Mariam they belied. Distrust me still, if these be signs of hate. What hast thou there? A drink procuring love. The queen desired me to deliver it. Did I? <laughs> Some hateful practice this will prove, yet it can be no worse than heaven's permit. Confess the truth, thou wicked instrument, to her outrageous will. Tis poison, sure. Tell true, and thou shalt escape the punishment, which if thou dost conceal, thou shalt endure. I know not, but I doubt it be no less, long since the hate of you her heart did cease. Knowst thou the cause thereof? My lord, I guess Sir Hemus told the tale that did displease. Oh, heaven! Sir Hemus false. Go, let him die. 
Stay not to suffer him to speak a word. Oh, damned villain. Did he falsify the oath he swore, e'en of his own accord? Now do I know thy falsehood, painted devil, thou white enchantress. Oh, thou art so foul that hyssop cannot cleanse thee, worst of evil. A beauteous body hides a loathsome soul. Your love, Sir Hemus, moved by his affection, though he hath ever heretofore been true, did blab, forsooth, that I did give direction, if I were put to death, to slaughter you. And you, in black revenge, attended now to add a murder to your breach of vow. Is this a dream? Oh, heaven, that twere no more. I'll give my realm to who can prove it so. I would I were like any beggar poor, so I for false my Marian did not know. Foul pith contained in the fairest rind that ever graced a cedar. Oh, thine eye as pure as heaven, but impure thy mind, and for impurity shall Mariam die. Why didst thou love Sahemus? They can tell that say I loved him. Mariam says not so. Oh, cannot impudence the coals expel that for thy love in Herod's bosom glow? It is as plain as water, and denial makes of thy falsehood but a greater trial. Hast thou beheld thyself, and couldst not stain so rare perfection? Even for love of thee I do profoundly hate thee. Wert thou plain, thou shouldst the wonder of Judea be, but, oh, thou art not. Hell itself lies hid beneath thy heavenly show. Yet wert thou chaste, thou mightst exalt. Pull down, command, forbid, and be above the wheel of fortune placed. Hadst thou complotted Herod's massacre, that so thy son a monarch might be styled, not half so grievous such an action were, as once to think that Mariam is defiled. Bright workmanship of nature sullied o'er, with pictured darkness now thine end shall be. Thou shalt not live, fair fiend, to cousin more with heavenly substance as thou cousinst me. Yet must I love thee in despite of death, and thou shalt die in the despite of love. For neither shall my love prolong thy breath, nor shall thy loss of breath my love remove. I might have seen thy falsehood in thy face. Where couldst thou get thy stars that served for eyes except by theft? And theft is foul disgrace. This had appeared before, were Herod wise, but I'm a sot, a very sot, no better. My wisdom long ago a wandering fell, thy face encountering it, my wit did fetter, and made before delight my freedom sell. Give me my heart, false creature, tis a wrong my guiltless heart should now with thine be slain. Thou hadst no right to lock it up so long. And with usurper's name I marry him stain. Have you designed Sir Hemus to his end? I have, my lord. Then call our royal guard to do as much for Mariam. They offend, leave ill unblamed, or good without reward. Here, take her to her death. Come back, come back. What meant I to deprive the world of light? To muffle jury in the foulest black that ever was an opposite to white? Why, whither would you carry her? You, you bet we should Lord. conduct her to her death, death, my lord. Why, sure I did not. Herod was not mad. Why should she feel the fury of the sword? Oh, now the grief returns into my heart and pulls me piecemeal. Love and hate do fight. And now hath love acquired the greater part. And now hath hate affection conquered quite. And therefore... Bear her hence. And Hebrew, why sees you with lion's paws, the fairest lamb of all the flock? She must not, shall not die. With heart her I most miserable am. And with her more than most. Away, away. Ah, but bear her but to prison, not to death. And is she gone indeed? Stay, villain, stay. Her looks alone preserved your sovereign's breath. Well, let her go. But yet she shall not die. I cannot think she meant to poison me, but certain tis she lived too wantonly, and therefore shall she never more be free. Foul villain, 
Can thy pitchy coloured soul permit thine ear to hear her causeless doom, and not enforce thy tongue that tale control that must unjustly bring her to her tomb? O oh, Salome, thou hast thyself repaid for all the benefits that thou hast done. Thou art the cause I have the queen betrayed. Thou oh, hast my heart to darkest falsehood won. I am condemned. Heaven gave me not my tongue to slander innocence, to lie, deceive, to be the hateful instrument to wrong, the earth of greatest glory to bereave. My sin ascends and doth to heaven cry, it is the blackest deed that ever was. And there doth sit an angel notary that doth record it down in leaves of brass. Oh, how my heart doth quake! A Akitophel, thou found a means thyself from shame to free, and sure my soul approves thou did not well. All follow some, and I will follow thee. Now here we step our last, the way to death. We must not tread this way a second time. Yet let us resolutely yield our breath. Death is the only ladder heaven to climb. With willing mind I could myself resign, but yet it grieves me with a grief untold our death should be accompanied with thine, our friendship we to thee have dearly sold. Still wilt thou wrong the sacred name of friend? Then shouldst thou never style it in friendship more, but base mechanic traffic that doth lend, yet will be sure they shall the debt restore. I could with needless compliment return, this for thy ceremony, I could say, "'Tis I that made the fire your house to burn, "'for but for me she would not you betray. "'Had not a damned woman sought mine end, "'you had not been the subject of her hate. "'You never did her hateful mind offend, "'nor could your deaths have freed her nuptial fate. "'Therefore, fair friends, though you were still unborn, "'some other subtlety devised should be whereby my life, though guiltless, should be torn. Thus have I proved, tis you that die for me, and therefore should I weakly now lament, you have but done your duties. Friends should die alone, their friends' disasters to prevent, though not compelled by strong necessity. But now, farewell, fair city. Never more shall I behold your beauty shining bright. Farewell of Jewish men, the worthy store. But no farewell to any female white. You wavering crew, my curse to you I leave. You had but one to give you any grace, and you yourselves will Mariam's life bereave. Your commonwealth doth innocency chafe. You creatures made to be the human curse, you tigers, lionesses, hungry bears, tear massacring hyenas, nay, far worse. For they for prey do shed their fainted tears, but you will weep, you creatures, cross to good, for your unquenched thirst of human blood. You are the angels, cast from heaven for pride, and still do keep your angels outward show, but none of you are inly beautified, for still your heaven-depriving pride doth grow. Did not the sins of man require a scourge? Your place on earth had been by this withstood. But since a flood no more the world must purge, you stayed in office of a second flood. You giddy creatures, sowers of debate. You love today, and for no other cause, but for yesterday did deeply hate. You are the wreck of order, breach of laws. You best are foolish, froward, Wanton, vain, your worst, adulterous, murderous, cunning, proud, and Salome attends the latter train, or rather she, their leader, is allowed. I do the sottishness of men bewail that do with following you enhance your pride. To a better that the human race should fail than be by such a mischief multiplied. Chams, servile curse, to all your sex was given, because in paradise you did offend. Then do we not resist the will of heaven, when on your wills like servants we attend? You are to nothing constant, but to ill. You are for naught, but wickedness endued. Your loves are set on nothing but your will, and 
Thus, my censure, I of you conclude, you are the least of goods, the worst of evils. You're best or worse than men, you're worse than devils. Come, let us to our death. Are we not blessed? Our death will freedom from these creatures give, those trouble quiet sowers of unrest. And this I vow, that had I leave to live, I would forever lead a single life, and never venture on a devilish wife. <coughs> <coughs> Nay, she shall die. Die, quoth you, that she shall. But for the means, the means, methinks tis hard to find a means to murder her withal. Therefore I am resolved she shall be spared. Why? Let her be beheaded. That were well. Think you that swords are miracles like you? Her skin will every cutlass edge repel. And then your enterprise you well may rue. What if the fierce Arabian notice take of this your wretched weaponless estate? They answer when we bid resistance make that Mariam's skin their Falkians did rebate. Beware of this. You make a goodly band when you have weapons to deprive our land. Why, drown her then. Indeed, a sweet device. Why would not every river turn her course, rather than do her beauty prejudice, and be reverted to the proper source, so not a drop of water should be found in all Judea's quondam fertile ground? Then let the fire devour her. It will not be. Flame is from her derived into my heart. Thou nursest flame. Flame will not murder thee, my fairest Mariam, fullest of desert. Then let her live for me. Nay, she shall die. But can you live without her? Doubt you that? I'm sure I cannot. I beseech you try. I have experience, but I know not what. How should I try? Why, let my love be slain. But if we cannot live without her sight, you'll find the means to make her breathe again, or else you will bereave my comfort quite. Oh, I, I warrant you. What, is she gone? And gone to bid the world be overthrown? What, is her heart's composure hardest stone? To what a pass are cruel women grown? Oh, she has returned already. Have you done? Is't possible you can command so soon a creature's heart to quench the flaming sun, or from the sky to wipe away the moon? If, Marian be, the sun and moon, it is, for I already have commanded this. But have you seen her cheek? A thousand times. But did you mark it, too? Aye, very well. What is't? A crimson bush that ever limes the soul whose foresight doth not much excel. Send word she shall not die. Her cheek a bush? Nay, then I see indeed you marked it not. <laughs> Tis very fair, but yet will never blush, though foul dishonours do her forehead blot. Then let her die. Tis very true indeed, and for this fault alone shall marry and bleed. What fault, my lord? What fault is't? You that ask, if you be ignorant, I know of none. To call her back from death shall be your task. I'm glad that she for innocent is known. For on the brow of Mariam hangs a fleece whose slenderest twine is strong enough to bind the hearts of kings, the pride and shame of Greece, Troy flaming Helen's, not so fairly shined. Tis true indeed. She lays them out for nets to catch the hearts that do not shun a bait. Tis time to speak, for Herod sure forgets that Marion's very tresses hide deceit. Oh, do they so? Nay, then, you do but well. In sooth, I thought it had been hair. Nets call you them. Lord, how they do excel. I never saw a net that showed so fear. But have you heard her speak? You know I have. And were you not amazed? No, not a whit. Then twas not her you heard. Her life I'll save, for Mariam hath a world amazing wit. She speaks a beauteous language, but within her heart is false as powder, and her tongue doth but allure the auditors to sin, and it is the instrument to do you wrong. It may be so. Nay, it is so. She's unchaste. Her mouth will ope to every stranger's ear. Then let the executioner make haste, lest she enchant him, if her words he hear. Let him be deaf, lest she do him surprise. That shall to free her spirit be assigned. 
Uh, yet what boots deafness if he have his eyes? Her murderer must be both deaf and blind. For if he sees, he needs must see the stars that shine on either side of Mariam's face, whose sweet aspect will terminate the wars wherewith he should a soul so precious chase. Her eyes can speak, and in their speaking move. Oft did my heart with reverence receive the world's mandates. Pretty tales of love they utter, which can human bondage weave. But shall I let this heaven's model die? Which for a small self-portraiture she drew, her eyes like stars, her forehead like the sky, she is like heaven, and must be heavenly true. Your thoughts do rave with doting on the queen. Her eyes are ebon-hued, and you'll confess a sable star hath been but seldom seen, then speak of reason more, marry him less. Yourself I held a goodly creature here, yet so unlike my Mariam in your shape, that when to her you have approached near, myself have often ta'en you for an ape. And yet you prate of beauty. Go your ways. You are to her a sunburnt blackamoor. Your paintings cannot equal Mariam's praise. Her nature is so rich. You are so poor. Let her be stayed from death. For if she die, we do we know not what to stop her breath. A world cannot another Mariam buy. Why stay you lingering? Countermand her death. Then you'll no more remember what hath passed. So he must love and hers shall be forgot. Tis well in truth. The fault may be her last, and she may mend, though yet she love you not. Oh, God, tis true, Sahimus, earth and heaven, why did you both conspire to make me cursed, in cousening me with shows and proofs uneven? She showed the best, and yet did prove the worst. Her show was such as had our singing king, the holy David, Mariam's beauty seen. The Hittites had then felt no deadly sting, nor Bethsabe had never been a queen. Or had his son, the wisest man of men, whose fond delight did most consist in change, beheld her face, he had been stayed again. No creature having, having her can wish to range. Had Asuerus seen my Mariam's brow, the humble Jew she might have walked alone. Her beauteous virtue should have stayed below, while Mariam mounted to the Persian throne. But what avails it all? For in the weight she is deceitful, light as vanity. Oh, she was made for nothing but a bait to train some hapless man to misery. I am the hapless man that have been trained to endless bondage. I will see her yet. Methinks I should discern her if she feigned. Can human's eyes be dazed by woman's wit? Once more these eyes of mine with her shall meet, before the headsman do her life bereave. Shall I for ever part from thee, my sweet, without the taking of my latest leave? You had as good resolve to save her now. I'll stay her death, tis well determinate. For sure she never more will break her vow, so he must send Josephus both a dead. She shall not live, nor will I see her face. A long-heeled wound a second time doth bleed. With Joseph I remember her disgrace. A shameful end ensues a shameful deed. Oh, that I had not called to mind anew the discontent of Mariam's murmuring heart. T'was you, you foul-mouthed Arte, none but you that did the thought hereof to me impart. Hence from my sight, my black tormentor, hence! For hadst not thou made Herod insecure, I had not doubted Mariam's innocence, but still had held her in my heart for pure. I'll leave you to your passion. Tis no time to purge me now, though of a guiltless crime. Destruction take thee! Thou hast made my heart as heavy as revenge. I am so dull... Methinks I am not sensible of smart, though hideous horrors at my bosom pull. My head weighs downwards. Therefore will I go to try if I can sleep away my woe. Am I the Marian that presumed so much and deemed my face must needs preserve my breath? I. I it was that thought my beauty such as it alone 
could countermand my death. Now death will teach me. He can pale as well a cheek of roses as a cheek less bright. And dim an eye whose shine doth most excel as soon as one that casts a meaner light. Had not myself against myself conspired, no plot, no adversary from without could Herod's love for Mariam have retired. Or from his heart have thrust my semblance out, the wanton queen that never loved for love, false Cleopatra, wholly set on gain, with all her slights did prove, yet vainly prove, for her the love of Herod to obtain. Yet her allurements, all her courtly guile, her smiles, her favours, and her smooth deceit could not my face from Herod's mind exile, but were with him of less than little weight that face and person that in Asia late for beauty's goddess Paphos queen was tain, that face that did captive great Julius fate, the very face that was Antonius bane, that face that to be Egypt's pride was born, that face that all the world esteemed so rare did Herod hate, despise, neglect and scorn when with the same he Mariams did compare. This maid that I improvidently wrought, and on the wager even my life did pawn, because I thought, and yet but truly thought, that Herod's love could not from me be drawn. But now, though out of time I plainly see, it could be drawn, though never drawn from me. Had I but with humility been graced as well as fair, I might have proved me wise. But I did think, because I knew me chaste, one virtue for a woman might suffice, that mind for glory of our sex might stand, wherein humility and chastity doth march with equal paces hand in hand. But one of single seen, who setteth by? And I had singly one, but tis my joy that I was ever innocent, though sour, and therefore can they but my life destroy, my soul is free from adversary's power. You princes great in power and high in birth, be great and high, I envy not your hap. Your birth must be from dust, your power on earth. In heaven shall Mariam sit in Sarah's lap. In heaven? Your beauty cannot bring you thither. Your soul is black and spotted, full of sin. You in adultery lived nine years together, and heaven will never let adultery in. What art thou that dost poor Mariam pursue? Some spirit sent to drive me to despair, who sees for truth that Mariam is untrue. If fair she be, she is as chaste as fair. I am that Doris that was once beloved, beloved by Herod, Herod's lawful wife. T'was you that Doris from his side removed and robbed from me the glory of my life. Was that adultery? Did not Moses say that he being matched in a deadly hate might by permission put his wife away and take a more beloved to be his mate? What did he hate me for? For simple truth? For bringing beauteous babes, for love to him, for riches, noble birth, or tender youth, or for no stain did Doris honour dim. Oh, tell me, Mariam, tell me if you know which fault of these made Herod Doris foe. These thrice three years have I with hands held up and bowed knees fast nailed to the ground, besought for thee the dregs of that same cup, that cup of wrath that is for sinners found, and now thou art to drink it. Doris, curse upon thyself did all this while attend, but now it shall pursue thy children worse. Oh, Doris, now to thee my knees I bend. That heart that never bowed to thee doth bow. Curse not mine infants, let it thee suffice that heaven doth punishment to me allow. Thy curse is cause that guiltless Mariam dies. Had I ten thousand tongues, and every tongue inflamed with poison's power and steeped in gall, 
my curses would not answer for my wrong, though I in cursing thee employed them all. Hear thou that did Mount Jerarim command to be a place whereon with cause to curse. Stretch thy revenging arm, thrust forth thy hand, and plague the mother much, the children worse. Throw flaming fire upon the base-born heads that were begotten in unlawful beds. But let them live till they have sense to know what tis to be in miserable state. Then be their nearest friends their overthrow, attended be they by suspicious hate. And Mariam, I do hope this boy of mine shall one day come to be the death of thine. Oh, heaven forbid. I hope the world shall see this curse of thine shall be returned on thee. Now, earth, farewell. Though I be yet but young, yet I, methinks, have known thee too, too long. The fairest action of our human life is scorning to revenge an injury. For who forgives without a further strife, his adversary's heart to him doth tie. And tis a firmer conquest, truly said, to win the heart than overthrow the head. If we a worthy enemy do find, to yield to worth, it must be nobly done. But if of baser metal be his mind, in base revenge there is no honour won. Who would a worthy courage overthrow, and who would wrestle with a worthless foe? We say our hearts are great and cannot yield. Because they cannot yield, it proves them poor. Great hearts are tasked beyond their power, but seld the weakest lion will the loudest roar. Truth school for certain does this fame allow. High-heartedness doth sometimes teach to bow. A noble heart doth teach a virtuous scorn, to scorn to owe a duty over long, to scorn to be for benefits forborn, to scorn to lie, to scorn to do a wrong, to scorn to bear an injury in mind, to scorn a freeborn heart slave-like to bind. But if a wrongs we needs revenge must have, then be our vengeance of the noblest kind. Do we his body from our fury save, and let our hate prevail against our mind? What can against him a greater vengeance be than make his foe more worthy far than he? Had Mariam scorned to leave a Jew unpaid, she would to Herod then have paid her love, and not have been by sullen passion swayed. To fix her thoughts, all injury above is virtuous pride. Had Mariam thus been proved, long famous life to her had been allowed. When, sweetest friend, did I so far offend your heavenly self that you, my fault to quit, have made me now relater of her end, the end of beauty, chastity, and wit? Was none so hapless in the fatal place but I most wretched for the queen to choose? It is certain I have some ill-boding face that made me culled to tell this luckless news. And yet no news to Herod, were it new to him, unhappy he had not been at all. Yet do I long to come within his view, that he may know his wife did guiltless fall. And here he comes. Your Mariam greets you well. What? Lives my Mariam? Joy exceeding joy, she shall not die. Heaven doth repel your will. Oh, do not with thy words my life destroy. I prithee tell no dying tale. 
Thine eye without thy tongue doth tell but too, too much. Yet let thy tongue's addition make me die. Death welcome comes to him whose grief is such. I went amongst the curious gazing troop to see the last of her that was the best, to see if death had a heart to make her stoop, to see the sun-admiring phoenix nest. When there I came, upon the way I saw the stately Mariam, not debased by fear. Her look did seem to keep the world in awe, yet mildly did her face this fortune bear. Now dost usurp my right. My tongue was framed to be the instrument of Marion's praise. Yet speak, she cannot be too often famed. All tongues suffice not her sweet name to raise. But as she came, she Alexandra met, who did her death, sweet queen, no wit bewail, but as if nature she did quite forget, she did upon her daughter loudly rail. Why stopped you not her mouth? Where had she words to darken that that heaven made so bright? Out, sacred tongue, no epithet affords to call her other than the world's delight. She told her that her death was too, too good, and that already she had lived too long. She said she shamed to have a part in blood of her that did the princely Herod wrong. Base pick, thank devil. Shame. It was all her glory that she to noble Mariam was the mother. But never shall it live in any story her name except to infamy I'll smother. What answer did her princely daughter make? She made no answer. But she looked the while. As if thereof she scarce did notice take. Yet smiled a dutiful though scornful smile. Sweet creature, I that look to mine do call. Full oft has Herod been amazed with all. Go on. She came unmoved with pleasant grace, as if to triumph her arrival were in stately habit and with cheerful face. Yet every eye was moist but Miriam's there. When justly opposite to me she came, she picked me out from all the crew. She beckoned to me, called me by my name, for she my name, my birth and fortune knew. What? Did she name thee? Happy, happy man, wilt thou not ever love that name the better? But what sweet tune did this fair dying swan afford thine ear? Tell all, omit no letter. Tell thou, my lord, said she. Me? Meant she me? Is true? The more my shame, I was her lord. Were I not made her lord, I still should be. But now her name must be by me adored. Oh, say, what said she more? Each word she said shall be the food on which my heart is fed. Tell thou, my lord, thou sawest me lose my breath. Oh, that I could that sentence now control. If guiltily eternal be my death. I hold her chaste even in my inmost soul. By three days hence, if wishes could revive... I know himself would make me oft alive. Three days, three hours, three minutes, not so much a minute in a thousand parts. Divide my penitency for her death is such as in the first I wished she had not died. But forward in thy tale. Why, on she went, and after she some silent prayer had said, she did as if to die she were content, and thus to heaven. Her heavenly soul is fled. But art thou sure there doth no life remain? Is it possible my Mariam should be dead? Is there no trick to make her breathe again? Her body is divided from her head. Why, yet methinks they might be found by art strange ways of cure. Tis sure rare things are done by an inventive head and willing heart. Let not, my lord, your fancies idly run. It is as possible it should be seen that we should make the holy Abraham live, though he entombed two thousand years have been, as breathe again to slaughtered Mariam give. But now, for more assaults, prepare your ears. There cannot be a further cause of moan. This accident shall shelter me from fears. What can I fear? Already Mariam's gone. 
Yet tell Ian what you will. As I came by from Mariam's death, I saw upon a tree a man that to his neck a cord did tie, which cord he had designed to end to be. When me he once discerned, he downwards bowed, and thus with fearful voice he cried aloud, Go tell the king he trust that ere he tried, I am the cause that Mariam Causeless died. Damnation take him, for it was the slave that said she meant with poison's deadly force to end my life that she the crown might have, which tale did Mariam from herself divorce. Oh, pardon me, thou pure, unspotted ghost. My punishment must needs sufficient be in missing that content I valued most, which was thy admirable face to see. I had but one inestimable jewel, yet one I had, no monarch had the like, and therefore may I curse myself as cruel, t'was broken by a blow myself did strike. I gazed thereon, and never thought me blessed, but when on it my dazzled eye might rest. A precious mirror made by wondrous art, I prized it ten times dearer than my crown, and laid it up fast folded in my heart. Yet I in sudden colour cast it down, and pashed it all to pieces. T'was no foe that robbed me of it, no Arabian host, nor no Armenian guide hath used me so, but Herod's wretched self has Herod crossed. She was my graceful moiety, me accursed, to slay my better half and save my worst. But sure, she is not dead. You did but jest to put me in perplexity a while. T'were well indeed, if I could so be dressed. I see she is alive. Methinks you smile. If sainted Abel, yet deceased be, tis certain Mariam is as dead as he. Why, then, go call her to me, bid her now put on fair habit, stately ornament, and let no frown or shade her smoothest brow, in her doth Herod place his whole content. She'll come in stately weeds to please your sense. If now she come attired in the robe of heaven, remember you yourself did send her hence, and now to you she can no more be given. She's dead. Hell take her murderers. She was fair. Oh, what a hand she had, it was so white. It did the whiteness of the snow impair. I never more shall see so sweet a sight. Tis true. Her hand was rare. Her hand? Her hands? She had not singly one of beauty rare, but such a pair as here where Herod stands, he dares the world to make to both compare. Accursed Salome, hadst thou been still, my Marian had been breathing by my side. Oh, never had I, had I had my will sent forth command that Mariam should have died. But Salome, thou didst with envy vex to see thyself outmatched in thy sex. Upon your sex's forehead, Mariam sat, to grace you all, like an imperial crown. But you, fond fool, have rudely pushed thereat, and proudly pulled your proper glory down. One smile of hers, nay, not so much, a look, was worth a hundred thousand such as you. Judea, how can thou, the wretch's brook that robbed from thee the fairest of the crew, you dwellers in the now deprived land, wherein the matchless Mariam was bred, why grasp not each of you a sword in hand to aim at me, your cruel sovereign's head? Oh, when you think of Herod as your king and owner of the pride of Palestine, this act to your remembrance likewise bring, tis I have overthrown your royal line. Within her purer veins the blood did run that from her grandam Sarah she derived, whose beldame age the love of kings hath won. Oh, that her issue had as long been lived! But can her eye be made by death obscure? 
I cannot think, but it must sparkle still. Foul sacrilege to rob those lights so pure from out a temple made by heavenly skill. I am the villain that hath done the deed, the cruel deed, though by another's hand. My word, though not my sword, made Mariam bleed. Hyrcanus grandchild died at my command. That Mariam that I once did love so dear, the partner of my now detested bed. Why shine you, son, with an aspect so clear? I tell you once again, my Mariam's dead. You could but shine if some Egyptian blouse or Ethiopian dowdy lost her life. This was, then wherefore bend you not your brows, the king of Jewry's fair and spotless wife. Deny thy beams, and moon refuse thy light. Let all the stars be dark. Let Jewry's eye no more distinguish which is day and night, since her best birth did in her bosom die. Those fond idolaters, the men of Greece, maintain these orbs are safely governed, that each within themselves have gods apiece, by whom their steadfast course is justly led. But were it so, as so it cannot be, they all would put their mourning garments on. Not one of them would yield a light to me, to me that is the cause that Mariam's gone. For though they fail their satin melancholy, of sour behaviours and of angry mood, they feign him likewise to be just and holy, and justice needs must seek revenge for blood. Their Jove, if Jove he were, would sure desire to punish him that slew so fair a lass. For leader's beauty set his heart on fire, yet she not half so fair as Mariam was. And Mars would deem his Venus had been slain. Sol to recover her would never stick. For if he want the power of her life to gain, then physics god is but an empiric. The queen of love would storm for beauty's sake, and Hermes too, since he bestowed her wit. The night's pale light for angry grief would shake to see chaste Mariam die in age unfit. But, oh, I am deceived. She passed them all, in every gift, in every property. Her excellencies wrought her timeless fall, and they rejoiced, not grieved, to see her die. The Paphian goddess did repent her waste when she to one such beauty did allow. Mercurius thought her wit his wit surpassed, and Cynthia envied Mariam's brighter brow. But these are fictions. They are void of sense. The Greeks but dream, and dreaming falsehoods tell. They neither can offend nor give defence, and not by them it was my Mariam fell. If she had been like an Egyptian black, and not so fair, she had been longer lived. Her overflow of beauty turned back, and drowned the spring from whence it was derived. Her heavenly beauty t'was that made me think that it with chastity could never dwell. But now I see that heaven in her did link a spirit and a person to excel. I'll muffle up myself in endless night, and never let mine eyes behold the light. Retire thyself, vile monster, worse than he that stained the virgin earth with brother's blood. Still in some vault or den enclosed be, where with thy tears thou mayest beget a flood, which flood in time may drown thee. Happy day, when thou at once shalt die and find a grave. A stone upon the vault someone shall lay, which monument shall an inscription have? And these shall be the words it shall contain. Here Herod lies, that hath his Mariam slain. Whoever hath beheld with steadfast eye the strange events of this one only day, 
How many were deceived, how many die, that once today did grounds of safety lay. It will from them all certainty bereave, since twice six hours so many can deceive. This morning, Herod held for surely dead, and all the Jews on Mariam did attend, and Constabarus rise from Salem's bed, and neither dreamed of a divorce or end. Pheroras joyed that he might have his wife and Babas' sons for safety of their life. Tonight our Herod doth alive remain, the guiltless Mariam is deprived of breath, stout Constabarus both divorced and slain, the valiant sons of Babas have their death. Pheroras sure his love to be bereft, if Salome her suit unmade had left. Herod this morning did expect with joy to see his Mariam's much beloved face, and yet ere night he did her life destroy, and surely thought she did her name disgrace. Yet now again so short do humours last, he both repents her death and knows her chaste. Had he with wisdom now her death delayed, he at his pleasure might command her death. But now he has his power so much betrayed, as all his woes cannot restore her breath. Now he doth strangely, lunatically rave, because his Mariam's life he cannot save. This day's events were certainly ordained to be the warning to posterity. So many changes are therein contained, so admirable strange variety. This day alone our sagest Hebrews shall, in after times the school of wisdom call.